Praise Thank God. You, she look, don't she look beautiful today? Yes. Amen. I can say that about her. She's my wife. I'm not talking about your wife. I'm talking about my <laughs> wife. Amen. <laughs> and so, Father, we just thank you right thank now you, for God. this beautiful woman of God, both yes, beautiful Lord. inside and out. And Lord, I pray, God, Holy Spirit, you will speak through her. Lord, that you would transform the hearts of the hearers, God from the inside out yes and lord, lord we just thank you that you want to do a great work in this place yes Jesus. start with us right now yes lord. and build her up on every lean inside in jesus name in jesus name. come on saints in jesus name in jesus name come on in jesus name, in jesus name. amen and amen, amen. And give amen. the lord a hand clap for that Hallelujah. amen thank take you, it away jesus. pastor t Hallelujah. Well, it's just a pleasure to be able to stand before you today and an honor. I'm just thankful to my Lord and Savior. Thankful for Pastor Howard allowing me to just share some things that God has been impressing in my heart, even as an extension of some of our times and our meetings with our women, with uh, Living Beyond Ourselves. And I wanted to just uh, share with you some, uh, some today on how God has been speaking to my heart as it relates to that topic. So, uh, if you'll pleasure me one more time to pray once again, I just would like to pray that God would speak to us specifically and corporately. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you on today, God. We take this time, oh God, to look into your word, God, to meditate upon what you've called us to be and what you've called us to become in you, oh God. And I just thank you, Lord, right now that it's without, we cast off everything that would encumber us from hearing. We know it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to transform from the inside out. Beyond reformation, beyond rules and regulations, God, we want a heart change, a true heart change, oh God. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to come in and just speak to us like only you can. You are the great counselor. You are the teacher. You are, you are all wise and knowing. And we just know that beyond knowledge, God, you can show us how to apply this very word into our lives, oh God. So we thank you on today from the wisdom that you would impart to us on today that we truly can live, move, and have our being and move forward in you, oh God. And we just bless you in advance for your Ramo and your Logos word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. Well, yes, on the screen here you see out of the box, out of the box. And I want you to look to your neighbor and I want you to tell them this because it also says it's time to let God out of the box. So find a neighbor. You can look right into their eyes anywhere, everywhere. All right. You got somebody you can talk to? And I want you to say neighbor. neighbor. Okay. It, is time it is time to let God, to let God out, of the box. out of the box. Come on. I want you to turn to your other neighbor and say it like you really mean it. I want you to say neighbor. And I do mean neighbor. Come on. It is time to let God out of the box. All right. I want you to find one more person because I think we just need to say this one more time. Come on, find another neighbor. Get to meet people and see their beautiful smiles. Say neighbor. And I really mean neighbor. It is time to let God out of the box. Amen. And my subtitle under that is, and to learn to live outside of the box too. Because how many of you know we can put limitations on ourselves and how we can surrender to God? See, we got to let God out of the box and then we got to allow ourselves to flow freely out of the box. Amen. So let's get into this word. If you'll just uh, stand with me, I want to read this portion of scripture, which is going to lay the foundation for today's uh, lesson. It's out of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Yes, you can read with us with me. Verse 9 through 16 from the NIV version. Join in. Let's read. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God 
What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. So what we need to know from that is that the spirit of God is what reveals what, how we need to live, uh, how we go about our lives, how we uh, go about our day, and how we go about fulfilling purpose. Amen? And so it's so important that we recognize that we don't know everything. We're just a piece of the puzzle. Amen? So it's, we need something outside of ourselves to know the full picture. The B-I-B-L-E is basic instructions before leaving earth. So we have the Logos word that is written, but we also need the Holy Spirit in order to activate that in our lives. Amen? Thank you. Yes, appreciate that. So my, from the key point of scripture here, I want you to know three things that we're going to learn today. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, I can do things, you can say it with me, do things I was not normally capable of doing, feel things I did not know I could feel, and know things I could not normally know. Now, what does that mean when I say do things that I'm not normally capable of doing? Well, I would never have thought that I could stand before people. I would never have thought that I could speak before a group of people and expound on God's word. But God, but the Holy Spirit has given me insight, given me ability to see into his word and to learn how it applies to my life. Amen? Feel things I did not know that I could feel. I did not know before I had the empowering of the Holy Spirit that I can have a level of compassion enough that I could literally feel what somebody is going through. Literally feel what they're going through so much so that it is a burden to me that I would also take in agreement back to God and give it back to him. Know things that I would not normally know. Today we'll learn what that means. Amen. We want to know things that we would not normally know that God Almighty himself knows. He is the only one that has the full puzzle. We all know in part. We all learn in part. But through the Holy Spirit, we can learn greater. Amen. Christ has come to give us a life, but not just life, life more abundantly. Amen. So how many of you want to live that life more abundantly and know not just in small part, but greater? Amen. Now, he only sees the big picture, but he can reveal to us greater as we live a life surrendered to him. Amen. So uh, there's many times that we go through different situations and we see that not everything is in black and white. Amen. And so that's why it's so important that we need the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit fills in those blanks. We, we may not know, do I need to take that job? We may not know, is that the person I'm really needing to marry? We may not know, is this the right move to make at this right time? Because the word gives us guidelines, the basic instructions before leaving earth, that we know how we're to live and compose ourselves and to walk holy before him. But the everyday decisions we have, it could be that, you know, when you ask, there is some things that are black and white. For example, for marriage, you know that you should not be unequally yoked. However, if that person saved, am I to be with that particular person? Am I to take that particular job? It could be a good job, but is that the job, God, you would have for me? So there's things that are not as black and white in the word that we need the Holy Spirit to help interpret for us that we can move out in his perfected will. Amen? And then there's some things that are involved that are not as obvious. Sometimes we can mistake a hard thing for being a not God thing. Sometimes in life, there's things that are hard, but it's part of God's plan. Just like sometimes there's things that are easy in life, that's not God's plan. So we have to have the Holy Spirit to know the difference. I remember at one point when I took a, a job, uh, when I had just gotten done having, I believe it was Alexis or Ariana, and I started coming back into the workforce, and I worked at Holiday Inn, and I remembered having just a hard transition there because not only was I with the youngest one there, I was the only um, African-American there. And I remember going through a process where it was like a disconnect in my training. And I was on the night shift where I felt like people were doing certain things in order to kind of pledge me into the role. And it was a hard thing. But, and I even came home to my husband and remember saying, you know, I don't think this can be God. This is too hard, you know. And one thing that was really a blessing, I always am appreciative of, he says, do you believe that God gave you this job as an assignment? I said, I do. 
But right now, I don't know if I should stay here. He says, well, have you finished your assignment? You need to seek God and find out if this is, if you finished your assignment. Well, I know I hadn't finished my assignment because I'd only been there like a week and a half. And, but sometimes we can run away from situations when they seem very hard, but it's still a God thing. And he wants us to endure through that situation, but rely on him and get his heart, his mind, his wisdom in the matter. Amen. And sometimes God allows those situations to come because we've been too much in ourselves and in our own reliance. And he's allowing us to see that we need greater. Amen. We can know we need greater, but not really see that we need greater until we get in those hard places. Amen. So we want to get to that place which we can rely on him. I know there was another time where for many months I wanted to get on with a company um, downtown. It was a great company, Coca-Cola. And I worked as a consultant for a couple of years with them. Perfect hours, Fridays off, luxury this, luxury that. And I was trying to move into a permanent position where it was always no to this position, no to this position, no to this position. And when we finally determined that this is the timing to plant the church, guess who I got a call from? Coca-Cola. And guess what? Beautiful team of people, very nice, Fridays off, great schedule, great salary, great compensation package. But you know what the Lord had told me at that time? No, this is not the timing for you to take it. Now, if I didn't have the in-between fill-in of the Holy Spirit, that's an easy option. I should do that because I've been trying so long to do that. But that wasn't the God moment for me. So we need the Holy Spirit even in areas of timing because sometimes we can move out of our timing. We can move out of uh, the area that God would have us to be. We can move out of relationship or into relationships that God has never had a voice in. Amen. So we need to hear from the Holy Spirit. How many of you agree with that? Life is so much easier when we are in God. Amen. So I want you to tell your neighbor again, it's time to live, to live outside of the box and to take God outside of the box. Come on, say it like you mean it. Turn to your other neighbor again. Say, neighbor. neighbor. I'm just here for a little infomercial. I'm just here for a little it's, time it's time to let God, to let God out, of out of the box. Amen. And to live outside of it too. So we're going to learn about how we can develop Three heightened areas when we choose to live outside of the box. Amen. So I want us to look at this Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. And it reads like this. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, through by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Amen? So I want you to say this with me. Spiritual maturity, Spiritual maturity. Activates, activates the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. To speak into our lives. Amen. If you want to stay on milk all day, you can. But what a baby does is all they do is they cry every time they need something. But I truly believe that the Lord has not called us to be Christians that stay in our bassinet as Christianettes, one in a little sermonette. He wants us to dig out his word and go deeper into the meaty things of the word. So when those hard times come that God says you need to move forward in those things, you're still hearing and saying, yes, Lord, I'll do that. Or when those easy times come where your flesh is tempted to go the path of least resistance, you'll say, you know what? That's not for me or that's not my time. Now, there's times, of course, where it can be vice versa, where those hard times are not for you. For that, that thing that, you, that is hard is not for you to go. And that may be God warning you don't go down that road as well. And that easy thing may be God's favor moving you into a greater of something. But there are other times where you need the Holy Spirit to interpret that for you. And how will you know unless you have them? Because the flesh always will choose the path normally of least resistance. Amen. Amen. Can y'all relate? Amen. So it's so important that we move beyond the milk. I always think about every time I take my kids to the doctors and they check for milestones. Everybody know what milestones are? Well, this is what it is. How is your diet? Are you eating vegetables? How many times a day? Are you eating meat? 
Are you drinking water, tap water, bottled water? You know, are you putting on your shirt with the kids, small kids? You put your shirt on by yourself? Do you brush tea, your teeth? They want to do milestone checks to make sure that you are growing in a healthy way. Likewise, in the word of God, we cannot stay in a place where we don't learn how to put our spiritual shirt on and cast off everything that's encumbering us. Amen. It should come a point in time where you can pray yourself through a situation. You can believe God to step out in a thing and hear God for yourself in a situation. Amen. You don't need everybody else to always be that go-between for you. God wants an intimate relationship with you. And the Holy Spirit is waiting right there as comforter, as friend, as counselor to speak to us on those intricate areas of our life. The thing is, will you listen? See, a baby does not have the capacity to get in a car with keys. I would not give a one-year-old keys to go drive my car. However, if you are 16 or 17 and you're still asking for somebody to give you a cup of water because you don't know where the cup is and the spout is, something's wrong with that milestone. Amen? So it's time to grow up. If you've been in this thing for some time, there's a time for you now to move into hearing from God, pressing in in prayer, breaking through through fasting, prayer, and deliverance. Amen? And so that's so important that we move beyond the milk of the word to the meat. Sometimes when you chew, meat takes some time, doesn't it? Because it can be tough, it can be tender, but it's not something you can just swallow down. Amen? So sometimes as you grow in the things of God, it may not always be an easy word that comes to you. But it still can be God in that time. And we have to learn how to chew and meditate on his word and be encouraged in the things of God when those challenging times come. Amen? Amen. So let's go to the next scripture. And it's Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. And it reads, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth or up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Amen. Amen. So the first thing I want to talk to you about today is that God, through the Holy Spirit, allows us to have perception. Everybody say perception. 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 What is perception? Well, perception is the ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through the senses. And I'm going to add now with spiritual perception through our spiritual senses. Amen. How many of you, when you walked in here, checked the screws in your chair before you sat down? All right, because you're used to that chair holding you, amen? God wants us to become so familiar with hearing the Holy Spirit in the little things that we are able to perceive his presence, amen? And that's why sometimes as Christians, if we don't practice that, we can be in a great uh, atmosphere of the presence of something great and not even recognize it at that time. We've become spiritually dull when we're not in tune with the Holy Spirit every day, but he wants that to be a practice. And that comes with spending time with him daily. That comes with being obedient, because sometimes we can hear a word and then be disobedient. And what causes dullness, it was when you continually do not do the last thing the Lord told you to do. Amen? And dullness can breed that immaturity. So you have to be at a place where we can hear, but we also obey. How do we obey? What do we do when we obey? I'm engage you for a second. What do we do when we obey? Okay, Eliana. Basically, that's what it is. You listen to what is being stated and you follow it. That's right. We have so many people trying to lead God and God wants to lead us. Amen. Thank you for that. Hey, we have so many people trying to lead God. God, if you just bless this, then I'll obey you over here. God, if you just allow me to do this one more thing. Or God, if you just wait up, hold up, Lord, hold up. I got this thing. I got to do it my way. And then you can show me the next step. God's not a God that is, 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 is one that has to repent for what he's told you to do. He does not make mistakes. He does not lie. The best way and the only way is when we heed and follow after him. And you hear God, obey God, equal what? blessing. Hear God, disobey God, equal what? Curses. curses. Amen? Or consequences that are not good. Amen? Which is curses. All right? So let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. And it says, the Spirit clearly says that in latter times, some will abandon the faith 
and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Amen? And so it's so important when you have perception, perception is like a check. Have you ever had to check like something, something happens in a situation? My husband and I, we always talk, say, man, I got to check on that. That doesn't seem right. I, I, we, should not do, we should not go down this road when we pray God about a situation. Um, there's been several times where whether it was a job opportunity or whether it was making a decision about what we needed to do as far as with our family that we got to check. Amen. And it took maturity to know the difference. The enemy, what he would like to do is distract us away from the presence of God so that if he can't pull us backwards, he'll pull us forward and we can be moving ahead of God or moving outside of God's timing. But truly, it's so important that we stay with God. And when he gives you a check, be still and know that he is God. Don't still move out ahead of God because, again, you're trying to be God all by yourself. Amen? And God has called us to be followers of the Lord, not leading the Lord. Amen? Very important. Let's look at cha uh, Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 10, and it's up here. And it reads, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is the best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Amen? So that leads us to the second thing the Lord wants to give us when we follow in the steps of the Holy Spirit and when we spend time with him. It is insight. Insight involves having a, uh, an acquaintance and a prior experience with an object. Having an acquaintance and a prior experience with an object. There's really an accurate, uh, deep, intuitive understanding of a person or a thing is what Webster says. So again, insight, the definition for that is capacity to gain an accurate and deep, intuitive understanding of a person or a thing. So you may already be familiar with the situation, but God gives you insight, okay? He gives you insight. Job 26.3 says, what counsel you have given to one without wisdom, what helpful insight you have abundantly provided, amen? And being that we're an unconventional church, we're not a traditional church, we rely on the Holy Spirit for insight because we're not just a cookie cutter church that's just going to go and do things about uh, that's just according to tradition. We believe in following and the leading of the God and the Holy Spirit, how he's called us. And we've called to reach many of the unchurched in the community. So it takes the Lord's insight to know how to practically apply that from day to day and week to week. But we trust the Lord because that's the type of calling and the type of church that he's birthed in our hearts to start. And so it takes that and that reliance. Acts chapter 23, verse 11 says, The following night the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. There are times where the Holy Spirit will compel you to go forth in boldness. And as Acts 23, 11 said, he was compelling to take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, you must also testify in Rome. There will be times where you're compelled by the Holy Spirit through that insight to go forth in the things of God. Amen? So there's a compelling. Another thing that there is with insight is with the scripture as it reads in Acts chapter 20, verses 20 through 22 through 24. This is when the apostle Paul was compelled ahead of time as well. And now, behold, I'm going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. This type of insight is needed because you can see here Paul was being forewarned that there was going to be tough times ahead. It says everywhere you go, it's going to be imprisonment and afflictions. How many of you are up for that? <laughs> if he told your head, would you be like, ooh, I'm going. Give me a luxury ticket there. I want to be the first one there. No, we want to be the last one there. I want to get the least amount of time with affliction and imprisonment. But Paul had to boldly, as we just learned about how the Holy Spirit compels boldly, go and even in the face of times when things are difficult. Amen? Amen? 
There was a time when my daughter went home to be with the Lord. Many of you know this story that God compelled us to go to Florida to minister to a church of several hundred people. And I had uh, nursed my daughter several times. So I wasn't the best before she passed. So if anybody who's a mother knows when you nurse a few times and your milk comes in and there's no baby to nurse, it's painful. And I'm still just two weeks after birth going to minister at a church to give out when I felt empty. But the Lord compelled us, and it was a difficult thing. But I look back now and say, Lord, thank you for giving me the fortitude and the wherewithal, because we just said yes. We didn't feel it in ourselves. We didn't know in ourselves what God was going to do. But as we stepped out in faith, when it was difficult, God moved. God showed us in part. As we took each step, God began to reveal how he was going to bless this church and in return bless us. Because we walked out of there seeing many people healed, many people saved, many people delivered, and God utilized the message of burying those things that encumber people so that they could be set free to receive that healing. That whole setup allowed us, through our pain, to minister healing and life to other people. And we had a funeral service at that service to bury people uh, of things that are holding them back so they can move forward in God. That only could have been the Holy Spirit. And myself, I didn't feel up to that. I wanted to go somewhere and cry. But God, but the Holy Spirit. So he empowers us through those hard things. And even with Paul, he knew it's going to be a hard road ahead. But he was tuned in. He was locked into the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 16, verse 6 is the Macedonian call. And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. There's a time where God's going to have you be compelled to not say anything. How about that? Think about that for a second. Self-control, when you have so much that you know could be said in that moment, and God says, not for this time right now, but you will go forth, but you will not say anything. So when God says, don't say anything, that self-control being locked in because we're tuned in with the Holy Spirit. Amen? How many of us need some self-control? How many of us need more of the Holy Spirit for that? I know I can raise two hands for that. Amen? Being an independent thinker that I am, independent woman, it takes the Holy Spirit. I had to turn off certain switches when I asked the Lord to deliver me from certain switches when I got saved because in myself, I like to make a case. I remember people used to joke when I was single saying, whoever gets with that tackle is going to need to be a lawyer because she likes to make that case. And that's what, you know, and that was a running joke. But when I came to God, I had to put all that down and say, God, when it comes to you, you have the final say. Amen. I don't need to bargain my way. I don't need to make my case. Lord, you are God almighty. You know better than me. And so that is how the Lord matured me. Philippians chapter one, verses nine through 10. I'm going to read that again. And it is on the next slide. And it says, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more knowledge and depth of insight. So we just learned about that insight. So that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. So the third thing the Holy Spirit imparts to us as we yield to him and move beyond that comfortable wall for ourselves is he gives us discernment. Amen. He gives us discernment. And discernment is the ability to judge well. The ability to judge well. Now, it's funny because when we hear the word discernment, I think as the body of Christ at large, we've allowed discernment to become a catchphrase for something negative. Ooh, I discern that something's not right about this situation. You know, or something's not right about that person, or something's not right about you know, my job or whatever that thing may be in my family. But more overwhelmingly often than Bible, it happens in a positive context than a negative one. God wants us to be able to discern those positive things that he has for us that we may not be able to see in ourselves because we're so distracted in that situation. Amen. Hosea chapter 14 verses 9 says, who is wise? Let them realize these things. Who is discerning? Let them understand the ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. A lot of times we simply can confuse discernment when we're not really in touch with God with a critical spirit. And we have to make sure if we're taking that discernment and always looking for negative things, we're masking discernment in criticism, in a spirit of criticism. Amen? 
And, and we need to be delivered of that. Because if you look in the Bible, you look everywhere where there's discernment, it was more so overwhelmingly used in the spirit of something positive than something negative. Amen? So make sure that we check, allow the Holy Spirit to check us in that, or we'll mask that with a critical spirit. Amen? If every situation that we're trying to find something is something to criticize or negativity, that is not discernment. If every situation we look at or every thing that we look at, we judge and we're trying to criticize and tear it down, that is what it is. It's a critical spirit. It's not discernment. The ability, it is a critical spirit. It is a critical spirit. It's judge, you're judging in a wrong way. Discernment is the ability to judge well, to judge well according to how the Holy Spirit has shown us throughout his word. And it's overwhelmingly positive. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's keep moving forward. So through this, we see that the three heightened areas is the power of the Holy Spirit can develop me in perception, discernment, and insight. And so when I'm surrendered and I take God out of the box and I allow myself to mature in the meat of God's word, I grow up by which I can begin to really hear and follow after God. Amen? Amen. In closing, and walking in those grayer areas that God has called us to walk in. There's black and white, like I have on black and white, but then there's gray areas. You don't necessarily know. There was a time where I was uh, relying on sugar too much. I need to cut out sugar in my life. Do I walk around and tell everybody, that means you can't have sugar. You can't either. It's not a God. Oh, I didn't go make a new doctrine. That was what God was speaking to me in that moment. So we need that meatiness so that if God is only speaking to us, we can acknowledge, okay, well, we, and we won't get in that comparison game. Well, they can do it. Why can't I do it? Well, what is God saying for you? Amen? Because God may have a specific path or journey he wants to take you on. So we need a meaty diet, that, or meat, meaty and steady diet of God's word. Amen? That's number one. Two, we need the filling of the spirit. Number two, it takes the Holy Spirit. We'd have to be full of him. Amen. To be able to hear him. And Romans 8, 15 through 16 is my final scripture verse I want to read. If you follow along, it says, The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Amen. Now, when it says bears witness, that word comes from, and we learned this in um, Living Beyond Ourselves, this is from Beth Moore's series, sumar to reo, which means to gather and to witness. That means to bear witness. And one example that uh, she's also used that I wanted to share here is so powerful, is that it's like thinking of resonance. And I think of anybody who's played any instrument, when you hit a certain key, that falls in a chord or you hear, sit a, hit a certain key, it resonates the rest of that chord, that it harmonizes together. And a musician once had shared, when it was uh, looked at more into depth, that when a person hits one key out of that chord, the other keys in the piano harmonize. You can hear the echo of the harmony outside of that piano because it resonates. Then the next test that was done was a person sung into the hood of the piano one note and all of the keys that had that note echoed back from the piano. Because it's like a resonance. It bears witness in one accord. Amen? And so that's how the Holy Spirit is to operate in our life. When we're in him, when we're in him and he's fully in us, when he speaks to us, it should resonate if we're locked in, if we're surrendered, if we're not dull, if we're mature. So I want to challenge you today. That we want to have God fully in our lives. Amen. Don't you want him resonating in your life? Yes. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet. Because I want us to pray that God have a greater hold in our lives. If that's you. Only if that's you. If you're not ready, you want to stay where you are. You have a seat. But if you want to go forward in God and him to fill you. That you know beyond a shadow of a doubt. It's gray areas. What he is speaking and what he wants you to do and become. I want you to lift your hands with me and we're going to pray. Father, we just thank you this morning, oh God. We thank you for your word. And Holy Spirit, we just ask on today that you would just come into our hearts even greater. Fill us overflowing, oh God, 
We welcome you even greater in our lives. We know in ourselves we cannot do it. We don't know but in part. But Holy Spirit, you know all things. You know 100%. You know from the beginning, from the end, oh God. And we just cry out to you, God. We ask you to come yes, into our hearts even greater. Yes, we welcome God. you into our day-to-day -day lives. We welcome you into our day-to-day -day decisions. Yes, we God. welcome you into our devotional times. Yes, we welcome you into any area where we've tried to box you out. Yes, we God. knock the walls down, oh God. Yes, God. We take you out of that box, oh God. Yes, Lord. We say you be glorified oh yes, god lord. you be glorified in us and through us yes, and help us lord to cast off every weight and and sin that would so easily beset us that we yes, too god. would take ourselves out of the box yes, god. that we can flow freely in you because truly god where there's your presence there is liberty to truly fully worship and serve and live for you oh god yes, so we just receive from you now and we thank you holy spirit you who are our comforter, our counselor, our friend, make it real to us even more today. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you. Lord. Hallelujah. That was an awesome word. Amen.